Round two. Round two of radio. Welcome back to Inside Boxing's Throwdown. My name is Steve Johnson, Radio Martinez. In our second episode here, we're going to get right into it at a, a subject that I know a lot of you have been waiting to hear what we're going to say because we have we missed a few weeks um, broadcasting because we got family issues, things we have to deal with. But, <laughs> but um, we have an issue with Aiba. You know, radio is a big um, ad advocate of uh, dumping Aiba, um, the amateur boxing association that is responsible for sanctioning any, everything here in the United States. Um, Aiba's wow. in deep water. Let's just get right to it. Uh, wow, uh, they're in deep yeah. trouble from the 2016 Olympic Games that were held over in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. The boxing portion of the card has come under, was under scrutiny while the competition was going on. But just recently, Dr. Wu actually, Dr. Wu, who's the president of Aiba, um, decided that he was going to spend all 36 officials that were associated with the 2016 Olympic um, boxing competition. Well, you know, <clears throat> that's just uh, that's just proof in the pudding that that's that's an admission of guilt uh, when you do something like that, which can be good or it can be bad. Uh, the good thing is they they know something went wrong, something went terribly wrong <clears throat> in the am in the amateur games at the uh, at the Olympics this past Olympics, and the public can see it anyway. The the the, uh, the decisions that were rendered. I mean, they were just you know. It, you can't fool the public, uh, especially the boxing public that watches these shows. Mm -hmm. And then when you had the outspoken uh, Irish uh, Mike Conlon, Mike Conlon, go in there and said, you know, I don't care what I say because I'm not coming back to to, to amateur. And you that's know, uh, uh, mildly the way you said it. What? He well, said. yeah, yeah. <laughs> we got kids watching this show, but but you know what? That it's broken. Aiba's broken, and I said that, and I always say that about USA Boxing because USA Boxing and Aiba are one. Okay. USA Boxing is the United States uh, par portion of, of Aiba, and they have them all over the world. Because uh, uh, Aiba Federation, yeah, the yeah. Boxing Federation. So, so basically, uh, it's a broken system, and now that they suspended all the the officials that work that thing, I can see it right now, even here in the United States, <clears throat> the Aiba officials that complained that they weren't selected. To go work this show, uh, the Olympics, uh, I can see them salivating, you know. And so instead of thinking, well, we're going to make the program better, all they're seeing is, well, the door's in, open and the room's empty. Now's my chance to get in. Mm. Wrong mentality, okay? But that's the way that system works because anyone out there that has anything to do with amateur boxing knows that when you get a person in there with any kind of authority, okay, they pump that chest out, okay? If you don't agree with what they say, or you don't you don't go on their side for any reason, you can't object to them. You get mandated. You, you get you, you're put on the outside, and that's just the way it's always been. It's a broken system. Okay, it's a broken system that needs to be fixed. Okay, and Aiba it starts at the top, which is Aiba. Aiba is so concerned with getting their feet into the professional game that it's killing the amateur game, okay? So they gotta go back and put amateur back into the whole program. Cause you see, you remember they deleted amateur and Aiba instead of AIBA, which is, you know, amateur uh, yeah, boxing. boxing they, they, just, they just made the A silent, yeah. okay? <laughs> so so in, their, in their vocabulary, that A is silent. So that's only international boxing because they came in and they went to the 10 point system, which is probably a good thing. That's not a bad thing. Mm -hmm. But their reasoning for going into the 10 point system is the bad thing. They're going into their 10 point system to feed their professional programs and not the amateur programs. Mm -hmm. If you remember, all the talk was about the WSB, mm -hmm. okay, and the AP, APB, uh, uh, APB mm -hmm. Aiba Pro, two pro, two pro Aiba organizations, okay. But you don't hear about them now. They, they fizzle, they're fizzling, they're dying because the pro game is different from amateur game. Now, if you're gonna go pro, you go pro all the way. You, you, can't, you, can't, you can't go in there and start mixing it up with WBC, WBA, IBF, uh, all the sanctioning organizations, all the commissions in, in, the, in the country. Uh, you just can't do that. I mean, that's a big, that's something that, that, that you cannot mix with amateur, okay? so. 
Will they fix it? That's the question. Will Will they fix it? You know. Well, like when you say fix, I don't know what what you what that would entail for you because, like we talked about three years ago, I told you when when I even first mandated that they were were no longer going to refer to their amateur boxers as amateur boxers, they were referred to as Olympic style boxers. That was the precursor to them starting mm -hmm. into this thing where we're going to have elite boxers, box with no headgear. We're getting ready for the pro game. Um, Dr. Yeah. Wu was, I, I still maintain that he was always transparent. Somewhere along the line here in this 2016 Olympics, the greed took over. Um, before the Olympic Games started, uh, Kareem Bouzidi had been named, and he's from the African, Con That's National right. African Congress. He had been named um, executive director of, of AIBA. Okay, he goes over to the games, and and they sent four or five guys home. Then Kareem Bouzidi <clears throat> was one of the first ones. He was gone. Right? He was the ringleader of that that they took. So he said, "Hmm." So there were some allegations of of under the table monies coming, which is not unusual in the Olympic games. No, no. But the bottom line was is that after Mike Conlon, his 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 just bashing. Of, uh, of of Olympic uh, boxing, and it wasn't um, sour grapes. He he knew what he was talking oh, about. Oh, well, let me tell I you mean, this: Mike Conlon's fight, we knew what was. I mean, he laid out what was going to happen, and that's what happened. The strange thing was, we had two guys in the in a heavyweight in the in, in the middleweight that that were Russians that won, and everybody knew they lost. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. this this thing of uh, Dr. Wu suspending all thirty six officials pending the inv this investigation. He's cleaning house. Well, see, but, but how does that fix it? Well, okay, the officials were just doing what they were told, okay. well, what they were paid to do. It, well, that's yeah. what I mean. Okay. I mean, I mean, there's allegations of, of, of signals, you know, head signals, this mm -hmm. and that, you know. So it was planned out. Mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't something that was random or or I made a mistake because I don't understand how to how to how to score the ten point must system, which would have really been disastrous if they came out with that. Uh, but uh, anyhow. Uh, well, well, let me see. Let me say this. You know, the this the first problem that we had with this whole thing, building up the Olympics, is that the United States did not have one official there. No, I I'm, I'm talking about scoring a fight, a, a, you know, official. We only had Ray Silva's from Texas. Ray Silva is from down in Texas. Yeah. He was there, but he was not in an official category. Um, there was no referee, no judge from the United States. Well, they, they, what, well what, what does that mean to you? Well, you know, and, and I'm not, I'm not going to fault them for that because the U.S. officials didn't qualify. No, that, no, well, no, they didn't what? qualify. When they went to the 10-point must system, let me explain what I'm just saying, okay? okay? And it's not anyone's fault, okay. okay? So for the past 25, 30 years, amateur boxing in the United States has been going on the point system. Just clickers, point, red, green, making contact with the fist of the glove. So... Anyone can be a judge. Anyone can come in and be a judge. You didn't have to have any background experience in boxing. You can just come off the street. You know, your mom, my mom, my grandma, <laughs> anyone. True. It, is true. No, it is true. It is true because all they had to do was watch the punches and click the punches, and at the end of the at the end of the round, tally which had more punches, red or green, <laughs> and that won the round. It, it was that way for years. But it, so they didn't need to know about ring generalship. They didn't need to know about Bob and Weep. They didn't need to know anything about that. Okay. So when, when, when the 10 point system came down, bam, like a hammer by Aiba to the US, United States, said, This is the way you're going to do it. Getting ready for the yeah. pro game. Yeah, mm -hmm. getting ready for the program. USA was caught with their pants down. They had no official that was capable of. Of scoring a ten-point must system because they didn't understand it. Well, that would be somebody's fault when you just said it was nobody's fault. No, that's somebody's fault because the United States is is pretty much what uh, much common knowledge. United States in the pro game has the best boxers in the world. So for you now well, to say that, well, they had. Well, for you for yeah. you to say that 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 it was nobody's fault, that is United States' fault. Well, well, it is, but the problem is it hit them so hard and so fast that they were not able, or they were, or they just didn't for whatever reason. Well, that's what have to be because yeah. since, since 2012, to, they knew that in 2016. To effectively train that's right. people on scoring, and it happens now. You can go to any amateur fight right now in the USA, and you can see how the judges are just dumbfounded when it comes to scoring. The, the fights, okay? Even that's, now. That's 10 seconds, but let's keep going because we got a hot topic going. Um, uh, so, 
even now today, you can you can see the amateur fights where the scoring is 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 a flip coin, you know. <clears throat> and I'm not going to sit there and blame officials because you can't score a fight if you're not properly educated, if you're not properly uh, um, trained how to score a, t a ten point system. You've got many factors in a ten point system. You've got at least five, six, seven different factors that you've got to <clears throat> that you've got to consider when you're scoring the round. Ring movement. Uh, the ability to make the other fighter miss, mm -hmm. uh, the the ability to counter punch, uh, uh, aggressive aggressiveness. Uh, uh, I still remember uh, one of the officials here uh, uh, said, "Well, your fighter loses because uh, uh, the other guy was uh, the aggressor. He he kept coming in, so that's who that's who gets the point." Not so in the ten point system scoring. Okay? But but you have to remember also that every official is human. Every official that's, that's what likes saying. certain things. You're going to have official that likes a guy. And, and it's that way in the pros. Exactly. They all got their flavor. And they that's, that's what flavor. I was going to say. So, and let me, let me say this. From both of us having been at hundreds of amateur fights, okay, I've never seen, and I'm, I'm saying this in honesty to you, I've never seen an amateur fighter lose that his coach didn't bitch and moan that he got robbed. I've never seen it. I, I consistently well, see I, I agree that, with you. that these guys are always... So you're never going to make well, the guy that loses happy. Well, why? Why? Because the coaches are in the same boat. They don't understand the 10-point scoring system, so how could they train so once their again, fighters? I'm just saying that how you can they, right. How can they train their fighters properly? You know, before, you can you train your little kids, uh, starting from the 8-year-olds all the way up throughout the amateur, just go in there and throw punches. Slug it with him. I, you hear it all the time. Yeah, just uh, throw, throw him, punches throw, with him. Throw him with throw, him. You throw, you got to stay throw. on top of it. You got to yeah. throw more than he does. Yeah. Now it's a new it's a new generation. It's a new way of scoring, and and you have to actually now start teaching them some techniques. Okay, so from okay. What, what you just said, so the coaches saying, have to learn as well. So what you're saying is is that the co coaches, uh, boxing coaches, and boxers themselves around the world were more prepared for the Olympic Games. Uh, competition than the United States was. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they were. You're saying officials, coaches, boxers, everybody. Since the United States, you know, mm. um, you know, I can't, I can't speak for Germany or France or well, you just Taiwan because you said they because I don't know, how, I don't know how their judges and stuff fare, and I, I've never been to one of their amateur fights. But okay. what I'm saying, it, it was, a, it became a big problem in the United States <laughs> when. When when Aiba mandated these new rules and you had to follow them, okay. okay. So that that's that has to be the first. And like you say, they knew in 2012 that this was happening. Happen. Okay. So so where was the educational process uh, of, of trying? They did to, that uh, though. They did that. They they tried their best to have. No, they didn't. You know, you went I, to, you I went, went to, to a couple of. Them. I, I went to I went to the. Uh, to the uh, and I'm talking about the USA one. Yeah. I'm not talking about Aiba because the Aiba was a little better. Yeah. See, okay. I'm, I, I went to the Aiba. I'm a I'm an Aiba. International Tennessee for yep, Aiba. Yep. Aiba. I, I'm an Aiba uh, uh, certified coach. Uh, and a USA boxing certified coach. Uh, both. Okay. But 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 the USA ones, um, they they really don't don't teach you that because they have no one there to teach. So it was a waste of time. Basically. You know, okay. It was the same as before. Okay, it was it was nothing different. It was the same as before. It wasn't. And yeah, this the, is the same the, class that they taught nationwide. Yeah, yeah. The class didn't change to accommodate the ten point must system. Okay. okay. And, uh, and the reason that my my only guesstimate is that they didn't have anyone to effectively teach that class. So so it created a problem. Okay. Well, you know that's okay. a shame then because, like you say, that's a shame because they have a, 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 just the number of uh, um, um, of, of professional referees yeah. that would have been glad yeah. to come in and help. Um, oh, sure. You know, I right off the hip, off the top, I'm thinking Tony Weeks. Um, what's our Cortez? What's, Joe Tony Cortez. Weeks. Uh, what's our guy that has the gym in Vegas? The, the, uh, um, Richard Steele. Richard Steele. Yeah. Um, Any of them would 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 have would have uh, been glad to help. Uh, I'm up, but but USA dropped the ball. That's the bottom line. They are more broken than Aiba. <laughs> Okay, so so I mean, USA. I'm telling you what they're getting close to. There's nothing that's going to be able to help them other than shutting down. Shutting if they, down. If they shut down, then where are the amateur boxers going to go? 
amateur boxers can keep continue to, to fight amateurs. It's the Olympic program that's that's going to be that's going to be jeopardized. You know, and, and I'm just going to say this because we're we're running we're, we're running late. But uh, Steve, in the United States, if you're in the United States, and chances are everyone that's watching this is in the United States, uh, you're familiar with with our organization, the USBL, United States Boxing League. Okay, mm -hmm. five years ago, okay, we're going into our sixth years of being in operation. We we put this program together simply because we knew USA Boxing was broke and it had been broken. We had not been able to put together a respectable, a respectable, respectable team to represent the United States in the Olympics. We have been getting smashed. We have been getting humiliated. Okay, and this year was no different. Okay, uh, and take away the girls, because Clarissa, no one's going to be Clarissa uh, Shield. Okay, but I'm talking about the men's program. Mm -hmm. Okay, we ended up with the silver. Okay, by the youngster and a bronze. Okay. And a bronze, but the bronzes are defaults now. You get two of them. So, uh, uh, but but you know, I'm I'm just trying to be real. Okay. I'm just okay. trying to be real. Okay. Uh, we have not fared well, and it doesn't look like we're ever going to fare well unless unless the system is fixed. Okay. And I don't see that happening. It, it, I don't see that happening. So we five years ago we started the United States Boxing League, the USBL, and the reason was because by starting a new organization. We can run amateur, an effective amateur program in the United States without somebody telling us how to do it. In other words, we're not affiliated with USA Boxing, nor are we affiliated with IEBA. Okay, so they can come and tell us anything we want. We don't have to. We don't have to do anything. They they don't dictate to our organization on what we have to do, how we have to fight with or without headgear. Nothing. Okay, we run our own program. We have our own rules. And if you remember, not too long ago, <clears throat> USA Boxing sent out a memo to their entire membership stating that if any amateur, coach, official, or doctor works any USBL show, they will be suspended. No, no, no. It got worse. They said they would be suspended for life. For life. Okay. For life. So, tell me. How does that help the amateur program in the United States? It's nothing but a big people with their chest pumped out, dictatorship saying you're going to do it my way and only my way. So, uh, so who suffers other than the kids, other than the the, the amateurs because they're not all kids, okay? Yeah, yeah. So, they need it. They need it. They need to follow IBS lead and fire everybody, including I mean everybody. USA boxing. Yes, and just start from scratch, or else shut the door. And start again because you know they've done that before, but it didn't help. You know, before USA Boxing, they were called something else. The American uh, Boxing. American something like that. So, so you know, it didn't work. They kept the same people in there. They they they've got to turn it around, and they got to turn around before the next Olympics comes in. Okay. Um, so. I, I'm, I'm not sure what USA Boxing is going to do. Um, Nobody. You is. know, right now. Um, at the first of the year, unless something has changed, they won't have an executive director. Mike Martino said that he was stepping down at the end of the year. Now, I question so that. We'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll, we'll see. see. That, you know, John Brown is the president of uh, USA Boxing. Um, I would say in abstentia. Uh, you know, John, John Brown is around much. Uh, Golden Gloves um, president is uh, uh, Ray Rogers and. Um, I don't know. Ray, Ray Rogers. It seems to me that Golden Gloves has fallen in line with USA Boxing. Well, they have to because they're they're they're. they're I, I forget the, the proper terminology they use, but they're an affiliate of USA Boxing, so they have. They to fall go, under that umbrella. They have to. Yeah. They they have no choice. Okay. So so you know they're not their own. USBL. We're our own. We don't have to follow anyone's lead. We, so do you think if USA Boxing, as you said, if they they need to, you said either they're going to fold or they need to fold, what would happen with Golden Gloves? Well, Golden Gloves will have to now. They'll have to stay independent. Okay, they'll have to adopt their own rules because they have rules, but they'll have to change them or adopt them, whatever they have now, to their own thing because they have to stay their same. Golden Gloves has always been a good uh, organization. If you remember, to all be honest, the, Golden Gloves is the premier organization. There were remember. all the champions came in: That's Sugar right. Ray Leonard, Evander Holyfield, I Floyd mean, Mayweather. Floyd Mayweather. They were all Golden Gloves champions. They yes. weren't this USA Aiba slash Aiba champions. Okay. Yeah. So, so what I'm saying is, 
there's they 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 got a lot of work to do. And and talking about uh, Mike Martino, uh, that that was the first indication that they're not going to change anything because he was he 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 was set to leave after the Olympics. Okay, mm -hmm. now somehow he changed his mind and supposedly won't leave till after the year. Mark my words, after the year he won't leave anyway. They're going to give him <laughs> some extent. It's a game. It's a game to them. Okay. It's a game to them. So I'm, I'm anxious to see at the end of the year whether he's going to be here or not. Uh, I'd be willing to bet he's not going anywhere. Don't think so. No, no. So You know what? We, we, before we, we leave, because I think we've taken care of this, the third episode also. When yeah. We combined the two and three. But, um, you know, talking about USA Boxing, there's one person that just left after the Olympics. Remember, Julie Goldsticker? She's That's right. She's a PR person PR. for Golden. Mm -hmm. Golden, I mean, for USA Boxing for I think it was a dozen years. Yeah. You know, and yeah. Julie did a great job. She did a whole lot of jobs, you know. Uh, yeah, she did. Um, and she was always accessible. <laughs> I want to just tell her congratulations and whatever your next endeavor is. Um, we don't get a chance to really talk too much about good people that leave to go do things. So, Julie, congratulations and hope you keep in touch with us. Um, if you remember a radio, um, Dang, time flies, man, because that was about four years ago when um, Julie was able to uh, um, come up from Colorado Springs with uh, uh, Pedro Otaño. Otaño, yeah. And we yeah. were able to inter um, interview him here. I remember um, that. I didn't have that show. I struggled on the interview because I had to be the interpreter, and I'm, yeah. not, I'm not qualified to be an interpreter, but our interpreter didn't show up. and uh, We managed, but yes. Yeah, yes. so anyway, want to get that out of the way. The next thing, USA Boxing. Um, they're in it with Aiba. Aiba's got a lot of work to do. And I'm, I'm, I know Dr. Bu Wu says he's going to take care of it. But like you said, right now, it's going to have to be a total house cleaning. Oh, it does. And um, I, don't, I don't even know where he's going to go to start with. We don't. I really don't. We, we don't. But, yeah. but uh, they, they, need to, they need to, like you said, it's got to be a total house cleaning. They've got to get rid of everyone and start, and start bringing up fresh, educated, fresh, uh, instructed um, uh, and not just these seminars that are going to, to uh, uh, say do this, do this, and this, you know, score a point. So basically, we'll see what happens. But you know what? See, I'm not worried about them because we're going to flourish this year. Uh, USBL is going to come out. USBL is going to flourish. We have no restraints on us. Uh, our program is open to anyone that lives in the United States, regardless of citizenship. Okay, we're not we're not here to put an Olympic team together. That's okay. USA Boxing's position. Okay. We are here to make skillful and talented boxers. We are basically giving them the pathway to professional. I think that's the most important thing that you people need to understand about USBL. As Radio said, and I've come to understand it, one hundred percent, they are not interested in, in Olympic competition at all. Uh, That's they not don't want to be part. They don't want to be part of that. Um, like he said, playing that game of Olympics. So um, there's just another path, like he said, and that's the way he's been just said it. I thought a pathway to the to the professionals. So exactly. There should be no bumping of heads of USBL and and, uh, and well, there and, shouldn't uh, be of USA Boxing because you got you just offering another way for guys to turn pro. But we shall see. We we'll shall see how it all we, ends There out. should be no bumping of heads, but but yet they. They make it. They make it an issue. So okay, but anyway, so you know what? Well, um, yeah, we've uh, actually successfully combined two episodes into one, but some good, co a good conversation to clarify some things. Hopefully, clarify some things about USBL and USA Boxing. Um, Aiba, I really don't know where they're going to go from here, and I'm going to very closely follow it, and you'll be able to read oh. what we find out on InsideBoxing.com. Uh, what we find out, uh, how Dr. Wu is going to clean up that mess there. That basically uh, took over the Olympic boxing competition in, in uh, 2016 over there in Rio de Janeiro. You know. Go ahead. So on that note, right. you know what, Radio? Um, it was good seeing time. you. Good <laughs> seeing you. I'm glad you had some nice refreshment for me. Usually, you know, I have to, I'm a little parched doing these things with him. But, hey, we got through it. And we'll see you next week. We'll right? See you next we'll week. be back next week. And in the meantime, hey. Keep them hands keep up. Keep them hands up, baby. <laughs>